So, the key points to remember when describing the methodology are that the same activities were carried out at three points along the course of the Afonso-Finway, moving from the upper course towards the middle course. The width and wetted perimeter was measured using a 30 metre tape. Remember the problems associated with this and how you had to work together to hold the tape down on the riverbed. A systematic sampling technique was used along the width of the river, which was divided by six. This provided five equal spacings. At each point, the depth was measured using a metre stick in order to show how the depth varied across the cross section. The velocity was measured using a hydroprop and stopwatch. The time it took for the impeller to rotate back towards the hydroprop was recorded. A formula was then used to convert the time in seconds to velocity in metres per second. These recordings were taken at the same points as the depth readings. All of this primary data was noted on data recording sheets. Don't forget the risks involved, such as slipping down the bank or in the water. The current was very strong, particularly at the deeper third site of Gelly Bridge. We also had to be careful of the brambles at the second site near the Rosebush Reservoir, and we used an antibacterial hand wash to avoid contracting Lyme's disease. When talking about improvements, don't simply say that more accurate readings could have been taken refer specifically to the problems Florence encountered. She needed a spare impeller to replace the one she lost, and she could have done her timings when Johnny's group were not directly upstream to her. Also think about explaining why returning to the same sites at different times of the day or year would improve the accuracy of results. Although we spent the day collecting qualitative primary data, we also have a variety of maps, OS and hand-drawn sketch maps, and some general information about the catchment area, which were our secondary data. Once back at the centre, we had to present the data. You may have a question like this. With the aid of a sketch diagram, describe one technique that you used to present data in your inquiry. In that case, you will need to sketch the cross-sectional area diagrams that we drew. They could look something like this. Remember to try and include specific, or at least believable, figures to show the widths and depths at the sites. Because our hypothesis links the changing cross-sectional area to changes in velocity, it will be important to show the velocity measurements too, which I've done here. This technique can be justified because it is a simple presentation method which gives a clear visual way of analysing the achieved results. Had we collected data from more sites, perhaps 10 in total, we would have been able to rank the cross-sectional area values and average velocity values and then applied the Spearman's Rank Correlation Coefficient Test in order to investigate the possible relationship between the two sets of data. If appropriate to the question, you could mention this. Finally, you may need to answer a question like this. How far did your fieldwork conclusions match the geographical theory, concept or idea on which your investigation was based? Our results did indeed show that as the cross-sectional area of the river increased, from 0.26 metres squared to 0.8 metres squared to 372.32 metres squared, so too did the average velocity from 0.24 metres per second to 0.45 metres per second to 1.01 metres per second. It would be brilliant if you could quote these figures because that would show the examiner that you had really detailed personal knowledge of the fieldwork. Take note of the command words in these questions. Because this one says how far, it is worth noting that although our data supports the Bradshaw model, 
We only explore two aspects of it. Additionally, we only collected data from three sites along a relatively short section of the river's long profile. Therefore, our conclusions are limited because we could have explored the full length of the river from source to mouth, and there were other aspects of the model that we could have also explored, such as channel roughness and the size of the load. Well, geographers, I hope that this film has refreshed your knowledge and understanding of the river's fieldwork. Good luck with your Jog 2 preparation. Riverside. Let's go. Let's go. Chicks wanna come take me, right? Enough about me, what's up with you? Up? One plus one, it equal two. You got a man, here's why I ask. Wow. Back to my crib, we could do some math. You plus me and me plus you. Me plus one, you plus two. You plus me and me plus you. Me plus one, you plus two. Tick, tick, turn it up. Tick, tick, turn it up. Tick, 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 turn it up. Tick, 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 turn it up. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. You plus me and me plus you. Me plus one, you plus two. You plus me and me plus you. Me plus one, you plus two. Tick tick, turn it up. Tick tick, turn it up. Tick tick, tick, turn it up. Let's go. go.